otherwise I think that just having different countries to compare to now after this year has been a really interesting kind of perspective it's opened my eyes to many different types of playing styles and Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Play the Globe. My name is Tara Michael, and today I'm interviewing Alyssa White. Alyssa, I'm super excited to talk with you because you just dropped the bomb right now when we are talking pre-interview that you actually are going directly to play in Europe after high school. So you're, you, you're a soccer player. You're going to play in Europe instead of going to college. Talk us a little bit through you know, who you are, what's your journey, where are you from originally, and what made you want to go this direction? Yeah, so I'm I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and I basically have always wanted to play professionally. I knew that, so that was an easy kind of start for me. It, the question for me was more whether I was going to go through the U.S. college process to get there first or kind of decide to go to Europe straight after high school. And I'm now 20 and I basically left right after high school to go to Spain to play. And from there I was in like an academy program for the first year. And my journey definitely hasn't been just like a straight line because I've, I tore my ACL last year, my second one. And from there, I kind of had to figure out how I wanted to get back to playing in Europe. But luckily, because I was in Spain beforehand, I had already made a lot of kind of connections and networked and got my foot in the door a bit over there and was able to go back to a professional club in Spain um, after I recovered from my ACL. And then from there, I had like an agent in England and I went to England to trial for a little bit and then kind of picked up a small injury there. Oh. from there I went on to Germany where I have family and so when I was there because I have family I ended up getting a trial with a team in Berlin and basically things have just kind of naturally evolved but it's been a very day-by-day -day process I'll say that for sure so yeah. where were you playing in Spain yeah so the academy was in Malaga so it oh. was Malaga city and um from there, our head coach got promoted to the professional women's team there. And so he took some of my teammates and like me um, into the professional team. And basically, when I was coming back from my ACL, I just asked, you know, like, could I come back and kind of I was just expecting to train kind of and get back in shape for uh, more trials and everything but it was more of a proper trial um, even though he already kind of knew how I played and all of that and knew they would want me but what people don't realize about this process is how hard it is to get visas and how expensive it is for Americans and the club having to pay for it I mean especially in the women's game there's not as much money so that has been a real complication for a lot of my friends as well so true so you right. were probably originally on a 90 day tourist visa, but you must've had a different, you must've had a student visa when you were at the Academy in Malaga. Yeah. So during that time when you were on the student visa, which was probably for about a year, could you also already then be speaking to professional teams? So you could use your student visa yeah. to try out. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So did you ever sign a professional contract in Europe where you were actually getting paid from a professional team because doesn't that automatically negate your chances to then go back to the NCAA and play? Yeah, it does. So I have not professionally like signed a contract yet. So that's my goal for August going back to Germany. Um, but no, I have not. So technically I still have my eligibility for college and I've thought about it. I've had friends here who are like, why haven't you just kind of gone the college route? And I've been, I spoke to my other friend in Spain who's playing there still at that one club. Um, and I think we both just figured it's just not our route. And while we like, we like like the competitiveness of the US, it's just not our style of play either. And I knew that from being in the South and where I think, and this is a common experience I've figured out with other international players, whether they're Europeans coming to America or Americans going to Europe, is that the U.S. has so much more of an emphasis on just being an athlete and not like a footballer or a soccer player. It's not as technical. 
do you think that that's an advantage for European players coming to the U.S.? Absolutely. I think that you're just taught more about the game. Like you learn specifically what it is to be a soccer player, a footballer, because you're studying the game, you're watching, it's ingrained in the culture. It's just a completely different kind of way to look at the sport as where, you know, in the U.S. it felt a lot like it was just kind of you're stepping on the field and you're just playing. It's not as thought out beforehand. You're not doing as much analysis. And I know in college they do, but at a younger age, you're not necessarily learning as much. So at a younger age in Europe, there you're more football focused. Now you're originally from Nashville, Tennessee, right? So is is soccer pretty big in Tennessee and, and the South? Like how would you rate it? I mean, it's the South. So American football is huge, of course, with the SEC. But specifically, like even I just got home like a few weeks ago and there was the Premier League event here in Nashville and they set the record for like how many people attended. So I think it's definitely getting bigger. And with Messi coming to the MLS, I mean, those tickets have been huge and sold out. So we have a good MLS team here with um, NSC. So I think that Nashville starting to get more involved, but I think it's becoming a bigger sport, no question. And I think Messi has a lot to do with that coming over here and getting people excited about it. So been, I've been living in Europe for 15, 16, 17 years. And I lived in, um, before that, I lived in Australia and South Africa and Namibia. I was also playing lacrosse. But, and then I moved to London and then I was in Germany for three years before I moved to the Netherlands. And all of those years, whenever there were World Cups, you know, and especially for the men's and women's football, soccer, um, I would always say, just wait, just wait. Because Europeans were always like, oh, the US men's team, blah, blah, like they're not. And they yeah, just, yeah. they keep coming up in the ranks, you know? And I do think that, I love that about American sports because I do think that once we get a hold of it, especially as we see more, um, and this is what we, we always are doing with global players, is more global movement of athletes, yeah. which is athletes like, even for me being an American lacrosse player on a team in Germany or coaching the Dutch national team or the United teens, I'm bringing my flavor, my style, you know, so from a sport like lacrosse, which is not as big in Europe, I'm bringing that to these teams. And it can be the other way uh, where, you know, European coaches, um, South American coaches that are going to Europe, they're coaching at the collegiate level or players are going and training with you at teams. It just overall brings that expertise and that dynamic um, and how they see the sport. You can see the sport through a different lens when you're oh, yeah. playing on another team. Whereas also your, your teammates in Spain or when you're going to tryouts in England and Germany, your American culture is gonna come through when you're training and when you're trying out. Do you feel the cultural difference when you're trying out and playing on these teams? Um, I do. I think no matter what, I'll have kind of the American competitiveness and physicality like ingrained into me. So yeah. like in Spain, it's very, very technical, but and it can be physical. But I think that the girls are much more used to like flopping. And as yeah. an American, I hate that. So I was just like, like you barely touch a girl and she falls. And I was like, come on, you know. And it's just a different kind of culture thing because in the US, I would consider that embarrassing if I was like, right. And I would never do that. But there it's like, kind of like, yeah, you're trying to get the foul. So it's what I mean, this is, this is exactly what I'm saying about the world cup. Like you never really see the men's or women's world cup players flopping. And I also would think that that would be embarrassing as an athlete, but the reality is, especially when you're playing at a world cup level, I mean, if you're going to get that call and it's like right outside the box or maybe in the box, like you, you always got to take that fall because definitely the other players are going to be doing it. Right. Yeah. So, so that's kind of frustrating. I think for us, cause it's not ingrained in us at all. To no, not at all. So I, that was an adjustment, but I mean, otherwise I think that just having different countries to compare to now after this year has been a really interesting kind of perspective. It's opened my eyes to many different types of playing styles. And yeah, there's so much more than you think um, and how everything's also universal. Cause I mean, also in some of these countries there's language barriers. And I mean, luckily with sports, everything is pretty universal in terms of just looking and seeing. So right. <laughs> that's been good, but yeah. 
you know, we, re we actually ask the coaches when we do international team tours and let's say they're training with another team in a host country. And I specifically ask the coach, I'm like, please coach in your native language, like coach in Portuguese, speak in Czech, coach in German, coach in Dutch. And a lot of times if they can speak English really well, they're like, no, that's crazy. I'm not going to do that. But I'm like, listen, if you're going to go and you're going to take your volleyball team from Brazil to America, they're not going to start coaching in Portuguese for you. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. So it's really, it's, it's a whole nother element that adds to international travel and play when you're out of your comfort zone and you're yeah. like, and, and I say like, you might want to be a couple players back so you can see what's going on and what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. It's those small things that you don't really think about when you speak the language, but like, otherwise, you know, you're having to ask like, Hey, like, what did he say? Because well, you can understand the general concept of each drill, like if he stops to kind of correct like technique, I mean, I know a, like a good amount of Spanish, but like when I was in Germany, I started at ground zero and I was like, oh, okay, that went right over my head. I have, right. but so I think in some ways you miss out on some development because of the technical aspects you don't necessarily get, but it also is very motivating to learn new languages. So mm, I love that. And good for you that you are motivated to learn new languages because yeah. of that, so that you can get those little nuances. Um, so what do you think about the cultural difference? And you hit the nail right on the head with American competitiveness and the physicality. And that's not only a stereotype, that is academically proven. We use an academic framework in our work from a guy called Gert Hofstede, which he worked for IBM in the 1970s. And he realized that there were so many different cultures working for IBM and they, and like, you know, Indian technicians versus Chinese technicians versus Dutch versus American, they were all so different in terms of how they worked both together and by themselves. And there's one across six different dimensions. There's one category called, it used to be called masculine feminine, and now it's called orientation towards achievement and success. And the, the U.S., the United States, scores very high on that, which means we're a masculine culture, which means we're very competitive. We want to be the best, oh, yeah. you know? You see other cultures that are like that as well. Uh, Italy, Japan, like there's other masculine cultures as well that they want to be the best, right? Whereas for me, for example, living in the Netherlands, the Netherlands is, is considered a feminine culture or they're not so oriented towards achievement and success. You don't have people that are driving fancy cars to show off or anything like that. I mean, literally the king and queen ride their bikes, right? I, yeah. It's <laughs> and so different. you're going to see differences in Spain, Germany, and England. What have you already noticed so far in those different cultures about like the competitiveness or where do you think that you're going to be the best cultural fit? Yeah, I think that <laughs> I, I've thought about this a lot, obviously, after seeing different cultures. I think Spain originally was quite a shock to my other teammates and me that were Americans because it was such a slow lifestyle and pace and nobody's really like urgent, like nothing moves quickly <laughs> in Spain. But it's like if you're going there, that's kind of like what you adapt to. And it's also a very good kind of adjustment to realize that okay there can be a slower pace of life as well I think Americans are so used to like you have like this internal need to be, like be doing something all the time or else you feel like you're wasting time and in Spain it's just not like that at all I mean people are sitting at cafes and in England I think it's more similar to the U.S. for sure I mean I think it's more I would say a masculine culture for sure um they still are very similar um, but I also think that Germany is very similar to England, which I don't think they like each other. So I always joke when I say that. Um, but Germany has a good mix, I think, of feminine and masculine, because I think people are very like individually driven. But there's also a very like good kind of awareness of other people as well. So it's not so like individually driven either is kind yeah. of how it. Yeah. yeah way to pick up on those different things. And it's important to think about, I mean, I'm happy to hear that you're thinking about it be before you're choosing a country or even going for different tryouts because you can get in a place where you're not a fit, you know? I mean, if you're the kind of person who wants to sort of be more driven and have that, um, you know, have that fight or that fire, you should choose a country that's a fit as um, as opposed to maybe a more slower paced 
or the other way around, you know, like I, I know for myself living in Germany for three years, I found it quite difficult to like always be on time or always have to, you know, make appointments like three weeks in advance. I was like, oh, it wasn't a fit for me. Um, you know, whereas living in the Netherlands is a little bit less, but I also am more drawn towards Portugal or Spain or Brazil. I think that's more in line with individually as a, my individual culture, let's say my personal culture. Now I have a question about Spain. You said that Spanish culture, of course, and we have siesta and we have, and it's a little bit more slower, but when you step on the pitch, when you step on the field and you're actually playing and you're in training or you're in a game, is it then more masculine or is it still a little bit more um, relaxed and there, you know, how do, how do the Spanish attack a game or how do they prepare for going into a game? Honestly, I learned a lot when I was in Spain. I think that was like very important to my development because uh, I started playing like a holding six and I had always played like attacking position. So for me, I had to learn to be more patient and going forward. But obviously the Spanish game is known for that possession based style of play. And I do think that in a way it's more feminine because they're just more patient and they wait for those opportunities and they really try to keep the ball. But it's really like I liked it because you're trying to move the defense. You're not just like forcing yourself in there like in the U.S. where you're playing balls it's direct. No, like they really try to play through the midfield. They're analyzing the game. You're doing setups where you have your 11 players and then you're kind of looking at combinations. I mean, one time we spent an entire practice just doing those combinations so that we could visualize where the paths are, you know, and it's just very different to where like you're practicing crossing and finishing like in these other more direct style of plays. Um, but in general, I think that they're definitely, it could be considered more feminine because it's just more patient. So is what I would say, but I liked it. And I think that I needed that aspect genuinely from, and for my development to see that if I'm in that position, I control the pace of the game. I can slow it down if I want to shift the ball. And it's just completely different because I don't think that the six gets used very well in like the U S as where like in Europe, it's like a very important position. So that yeah. is, I mean, that it sounds like you are becoming with each of these experiences, a more and more well-rounded player. Yeah. I think in each country of, learns many new things and because there's just so many different perspectives and in each team there's different ways that they play and important aspects that they already have drilled into it so you're just kind of adapting and adding it to your skill set you just pick up little things along the way so uh so do you already have a contract in germany i don't know if you can speak about it but do you already have a contract or what what are your next steps so i was playing in Berlin and I was playing with the team uh, Hertha BSC if you know who that is yeah I, my plan is to go back in the summer and I'll be joining them again um, for preseason and everything and then the plan is to sign a contract so I kind of I pretty much have like a, a commitment from the director they said they want me for next season and they're pushing to get in the second league so that's kind of my plan as well but I'm I mean I'm open to other opportunities but as far as going back to Europe that's where I plan to start and um I think it's just interesting because also Berlin specifically has doesn't have a women's team in the Bundesliga so the first league so all these teams in the third division like Union and things like that are pushing to get in the first league first before all the others so it's next year I think is going to be a make or break for a lot of teams so I'm excited to kind of be a part of that mm -hmm. the other thing with women's sports is if they have a male counterpart like club they have more money they have more resources so this team does and so I think that they have the like money and input to take this women's team far so this was their first year of the women's team and so they have a like so much more to do with it but this was just the or original kind of season so next year I think they're gonna be pushing to get in the second league and 
from there. I think Union is already going to be put in the second league this year. So, well, I'm definitely excited to continue following your journey. I have one last question. What advice would you give to any Americans who are maybe thinking about going this route or even international players who are maybe thinking about instead of going professionally, going to the U.S. to play in the university? So that's maybe two separate questions. I'll go with Americans going to Europe first, <laughs> but I think if you do want to play in Europe, you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt because it is going to be hard in terms of the visa. If if you're on the male side, it's a little easier to get um, your visa paid for, but you kind of you just have to be persistent and I know a lot of other players that there's dead periods where they're at home waiting to go back to Europe like this is for me right now where you have to be self-disciplined and continue to train and know that your opportunity is going to come but you have to be optimistic it's really you can't just think oh well it's not happening nothing's moving but when you're there you have to be fully in you have to immerse yourself in the culture wherever you end up and if there is a language barrier I really encourage people to try to learn because there's no, there's nothing bad that's ever going to come from this experience at the end of the day what I've learned and traveling and experiencing all these different things is to me 10 times worth things I would learn in a classroom setting as well because you just can't learn that in college and I think that you just develop so much more as a person um not that I'm saying college is bad or anything, because I mean, I still I'm probably going to go to school at some point. Um, well, I'm going to go to school in Germany as well, uh, is what I figured out in the last few weeks. So in terms of Europeans going to America, I know that it's sometimes hard for them to adjust to the style of play because they're so used to like a technical background. But at the same time, I think it's a great time everybody the, one of the common experiences I hear from like teammates in uh Germany and Spain and England is that like oh like American college is like the best years of your life and you know people ask me if I think I'm missing out on that and I don't think so I mean I think wherever I ended up I would have been happy and made the best of my situation but I'm also happy with what I've done so I don't think I'm missing out and it really just depends how what you make of it because you could also go to college and not really do much with it um but I think that the players that are going to the U.S. you know you might as well really like try to be like an all-American and get your name out there because there are starting to be a lot more pathways to go professionally in the U.S. so yeah, I think and that, that I always whenever I'm consulting with Europeans especially their parents I really remind them of that sort of NCAA clause that if you are if you play pro in Europe you cannot go to the US you know so if you have a couple extra years I do think in the same way that you just described that you're getting a little bit more of that feminine balance and learning about patience I do think that European players can go to the U.S. and play in the U.S. college university system and get some a little bit more of that masculine fire, that oh, competitiveness, sure. you know, and the lifting and how you're basically a professional athlete for division one, two, three, if you're playing it as an NCAA athlete. I think you're yeah, really yeah. a professional athlete, even though you're not. So um, I think that sometimes European players kind of are like, especially soccer in different sports, of course, it's more interesting maybe to go to the U S but especially in soccer, they're like, no, I'm not going to go to the U S like I'm going to go pro. And you know, only 1.6% of people go pro. So those other 98.4% could increase their skills and even their chance of going pro in Europe or in the U S by going the U S route. So I think that there's advantages for both. I think you're doing, it's awesome what you're doing by going to Europe. Um, and I think that there's definitely advantages for European players who are 16, 17, 18 and get recruited to U.S. colleges and they can actually get stronger and bring their technical skills. I'm like, you could be amazing at like a U.S. university, you know, yeah. and, and they end up not going anywhere and then they're they just kind of fizzle out because they thought they were going to go pro. And yeah. I think that there's advantages for both. I do have one little half question la left uh, because I'm a parent. What do your parents say? At what point did you start talking to your parents about this decision and saying, Hey, mom and dad, by the way, I'm not going to go to college. I'm going to play football <laughs> in Europe. What age did you say? Yeah. That, what has been their response along the way? 
Um, so it was like my, so I tore my first ACL junior year and I had a lot of, I was talking to a lot of D1 colleges and uh, my senior year, I still got D1 offers. And so, but the thing is the colleges that I really wanted to go to, they, by the time senior year came around, had already found other options. And so, um, I had D1 offers and like, they're really good schools, but I didn't personally think I would fit. And I didn't really want to sacrifice one part or the other. So I didn't want to sacrifice what I like in the style of play for soccer, but like a really good school or a really good school and just not like the soccer environment. And I couldn't find a balance that I really liked. And I was like, I've always wanted to play in Europe. I've said that since I was younger. This is like my dream. Why don't I just go all in on it? And so yeah my parents were super supportive my dad specifically is always like going to train with me and so I mean they've helped me every step of the way in terms of just like being there for me um and I think that you know every time I have doubts they're there to reinforce and be like no we know you can do it we know you can make it and not in like a delusional sense either but like realistically you know they would tell me if they thought that you know I'm not going to cut it or, you know, I know that as well. And so I'm very like grateful for their support. I mean, obviously my mom wants me to get a degree. I know that. And I mean, I think I do at a certain point as well, which is why I'm actually going to school in Berlin for like, uh, I think graphic design now um, and kind of getting into that media aspect of everything. Cause I realized I like that after traveling so much and making videos, I realized that I really like digital media. And so that's another big aspect to me is like, I didn't even, I think it's so nice to have gap years and travel and figure yourself out because I figured out what I like to do also in this time, just naturally. Um, and so, I mean, they've been super supportive and I'm so grateful that I couldn't do it without them because I know a lot of my teammates that's parents are like, okay, when are you going to quit though? you know, when are you done? You know, are you going to go to school? That kind of thing. And so to not have that in the back of my mind and that pressure either, just letting them let me figure it out has been also very, very nice. So I feel very lucky in that sense. Wow. Good job, Alyssa's parents. <laughs> Good job, Alyssa, Mr. and Mrs. White. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. So, Alyssa, okay. So where can people find you? Like are people are listening to this, you want to have you know, you want to grow your social media following and kind of inspire more people down this path. Where they, can they find you? Yeah, so I have my Instagram at Alyssa uh, White Soccer. I have a YouTube channel also uh, that's linked on my Instagram, and that has vlogs of me traveling and trialing. So if they really want like a firsthand experience at it, that's why I started making those. Yeah. Um, and then I also have a podcast. So I have a Dear Journal podcast that I started uh when I for my sale last year so yeah lots of different avenues if you're interested and in, yeah perfect well thank you so much I have loved talking to you it's so inspiring um and and I, I hope that you know when people are listening to this across the board they're inspired too because you know you're 20 and definitely the experience that you're speaking with is coming through you know i think you're exactly where you're meant to be you're working hard you're disciplined you have a goal you're set on it and you're learning a ton about yourself and you're and it sounds like you're really staying true to who you are you know you know what you wanted and you're not you didn't just take a d1 offer because it feels like that's what you should do so i think that's really inspiring especially at this time so Alyssa White, thank you so much. We are going to continue to follow your journey and we love that you're playing the globe. We'll talk with you soon. Thank you.